Hey there everyone, today we're going to go through the installation process of a Fronius Reserver, actually multiple Reserver stacks, to show you how simple this process is and so that you're ready for your upcoming Reserver installation. So each of these larger boxes is going to contain a BMS and a base, which we'll need for each stack. And you're going to have your quick start guide, the necessary covers, and then all your cabling and connection accessories. So each of these smaller boxes are going to contain one module each. You're also going to have your necessary covers, your screws and clasps for securing it, and a quick start guide. So each of the BMS boxes will have one of these sheets. It's a life-size sheet, which will show you what a full battery sack would look like. And because you're gonna to have to secure the battery to say the wall here, it'll show you where you're gonna to have to pre-drill your holes. So it makes it nice and simple. All right, so this is what the base looks like. As you can see, it's labeled left and right to make sure that you're placing on your module in the right fashion and you can see a screw here on each of the corners what you can do is adjust these to make sure that the base sits level and then you just stack your modules one on top of the other and just make sure that you have them aligned correctly so that you have your dc connection area here on the left so once your modules are in place we just need to put on a bms unit on top of the module. So you need one BMS unit per tower. All right guys, so before you start cabling everything up, it goes without saying, safety first, please make sure everything is isolated and everything is switched off. So this is where you're gonna do all of your cable connections, so your DC connections, uh, you're also gonna have your data communication connection, and then we're also gonna have your earthing done here. So you can just use a cable lug for that. Then for your DC connections, we're gonna be using Straubly MC4 connectors. So you can see here that there's DC1 positive and DC1 negative on the left, and DC2 positive and negative on the right. Usually we'll just use DC1 connections to connect to your inverter. But because we're doing multiple stacks, we'll use the second set of DC connections. So essentially we'll go from DC2 to DC1 of the next stack, and then you'll keep on going until you get to the last stack. Similarly, with our communication, we'll use this port here labeled inverter to connect the first battery stack to the inverter. But because we have multiple stacks, We'll also be using the in and out connections to have our comms going between all the stacks, essentially daisy chaining the stacks together. So how it works is you'll have your comms cable going from the out port of the first battery stack to the in port of the second battery stack and so forth. Those in and out ports will have an RJ45 plug in each port included from the factory and you want to leave that plug in on the in port of the first battery stack and the out port of the last battery stack. And for your comms cable, make sure it's at least a Cat5 with shielded twisted pair or something better like a proper Modbus cable. All right, so we'll start off with our covers. We'll start off with the top cover first. You can see these two bits in here. They'll slot into these pins here, as you can see. Then we'll do our base and side covers. So as you, as you can see, they're labeled left and right. So you can actually use them on either side. So I'm here on the left side. So put that in like so. Make sure it's left. All right. And you can see the top cover here is a little bit bigger. It's got this gap so you can access this area here. So now we're going to do the right side covers. Obviously make sure that you're using the right side as it says. I'll have that pointing up. So we'll start with the base, then we'll do our side covers. And you can see the top cover, it has no gap. Your cable connections are just going to tuck behind this nicely so it's 
out of view and the aesthetics look premium. Turn on the reserver by flicking up the main switch and then press the start button once. You will see the left LED on the front flashing green. Then turn on your Gen 24 Plus by switching on the DC isolator and the AC isolator. To commission the battery, we need to access the inverter web UI. To get there, you can use the Fronius Solar Start app or you can access the web UI using the browser of your smartphone or laptop. There's a link below that shows you how to perform this second method. This demonstration will be using the Solar Start app. Let's open the Solar Start app and click on the QR code scanning button. Head over to the Gen 24 Plus inverter and scan the QR code on the side of the inverter. If the inverter has already been commissioned, so the inverter was installed in the past, then you'll be taken to the web UI where you can now add the battery to the system by heading to device configuration, then components. Click on add component, then select Fronius battery from the available options. Just note that the inverter needs to be on firmware equal or above 1.38.6-1 in order for this to show as an option. Once selected, click save and that's it. The commissioning is finished. And there you have it, a beautiful reserve installation here. And you can see how simple that process was. I hope you found this video helpful and we'll see you next time.